I'm here today and all I hear is how I'm chasing crazy dreams They'll see Cause I've got perfect songs and melodies Just waiting to come out of me And you'll sing along Like oh, oh. Fancy words, clever lines and tales That take you back in time And you'll sing along Like oh, Everyone will know They should have believed in me Should have believed, baby! And hi, welcome to The Spiel. Angie and Julie, and you're in for, and I say this every wow. week, about a huge hour to go. Mm -hmm. This one today, I'm excited to get to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Jason actually found the, the story and, and shared it with us, and, and I don't know how this woman, uh, her journey taking her you know, through uh, the Rwandan massacres. Um, you know, it talked about her suffering in silence and how she was trying to escape this violence. And, you know, she's she was um, injured, you know, after being cut so many times there, just going through and... And know, never giving up faith. Never giving up faith or hope. And, and, and now she's arrived here today and she's gonna share her story and, and how amazing Jason, what it is. Yeah. real quick, there's a movie, the movie that you was telling me about, is it about this incident? Yeah. It's based on this? It is yes. about the Rwandan massacres. It's just, you know, you watch it from a distance. And, and, but when, when you see this and, and you see the faces of, of the people who went through such an ordeal, wow, an inspiration, indeed. Which gets us to, look what she endured. Right. And I spoke with her in the lobby a while ago. Yeah. And she has such a, a great outlook. And she kind of laughed. She said, you know what? It drives me nuts yeah. when I hear someone says, oh, I'm having a bad day. Right. I'm having My a bad hair day. Enough, yeah. you, know? you know what? Yeah. She said, yeah, yeah. you've not had a bad day. No. Yeah. You know? When you have to hide during the day and, and try get to out find and try food, food at, at night. night and um, naked in a jungle. Wow. And, yeah. and, and lined up so many times and they're going down the line and killing people and you, you she just made a decision. I'm I'm not going to die. Yeah. And and you know, she was spared and God has a plan for her and she's gonna share her story and she'll do it through this field today. If you need inspired, you will not go anywhere. That's right. We'll be right back. Coming up on the spiel. The guy shot me in the leg and he dragged me back on the bridge and he snatched the baby off my hand and threw the baby off, but the baby didn't die. Because I played a little bit of a lot of different instruments. Talk about jack of all trades and master of none, that really was me back then. At the Bank of Heron, we know that between family and work, it can be a challenge to find the time to take care of things like going to the bank. And really, what you need is a way to do your banking on the go. Well, we've got good news. With the Bank of Heron mobile banking app, you can manage debit cards, find bank locations, monitor account activity, even make a deposit. Just a few of the ways our mobile banking app can save you a trip to the bank. We'd love for you to come see us, but now you don't have to. The Bank of Heron. It's not just a bank, it's mobile banking. If you live in Southern Illinois, you drive around, you're probably going to go buy one of our buildings or know somebody that has a building that we have put up. It's only limited by one's imagination. You can build pretty much anything with post frame buildings. They're economical and sturdy. It's going to last a long time. We try to work hard, get the job done, buy efficiently to keep the cost as, as low as possible for our customers. We have a website, newcomconstruction.com. At the end of the day, I, I have to be satisfied with the work we do. You're watching The Spiel. You know, they're the images that we see sometimes on the news and it seems like it's a world away and, and these stories of tragedy that you can't even begin to, to make sense of in your mind. And you know, it's, it's made very real today because we do have a survivor. We have someone here who is an overcomer. The Rwandan massacre of, it was a period of April through July of 1994. I know if you think back a little bit, you know, we can all remember hearing about that and what was going on over there. And praying. Yeah, Marie Christine so Williams. Um, you know, the dark side of human nature 
we just we can't wait to get into your story and first of all thank you so much for yes. being here we thank you so you. much for having me we don't want to obviously have you relive it but sometimes to help people understand what exactly you've overcome we do need to look back yes what was it that you experienced in that time yes actually in 1994 um you know it was issues between two tribes between hutus and tutsis right which we you know the all lived together, the Rwandans, the same tradition. Uh, it's just, it was two different tribes against each other that they started attacking each other and at the time I was only 14. What, what was their problems? What was their- The problem their... is, was the Hutu president who was in power, who died in an airplane crash. Mm -hmm. So they, the Hutus thought that the Tutsi tribe killed the Hutu president. Mm -hmm. So what caused that, it was uh, rumors between them, uh, hate between, hate between them. And it was kind of tough because most of those Hutus, that the people we grew up together. Yeah. We grew up together, went to school together, had the same tradition and shared the same values. That the same people who turned against us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see a people divided oftentimes. I mean, we, we experience today, you know, war, and it's, yes. it's so difficult to comprehend. But the way you describe what you witnessed and what you saw, it is just, to me, Satan was present that day, and there was torture and killings. And, I mean, you, you witnessed all of this. You experienced all of this. Yes. Actually, what happened is um, after the... President airplane was crushed and exploded. Mm -hmm. um, the Hutu radio they started blaming the Tutsi for the president's death. So the Hutus they were so angry at the Tutsis because there was no evidence who done what. Right. And so next day in the mornings they told everyone. You stay home, you're not allowed to be on the streets. The reason is you wanted to keep people in the home. Like that will be easier for them to come and kill them. So they made a big list wow. of all the Tutsis in each neighborhood and how many people who lived in each home. So they just went with Mashedi, decided to kill all the Tutsis in the country. Did you feel when they told you to stay home, did you feel, okay, I'm going to be safe here? You know, it was kind of like every Tutsis in the country, they were very scared, but nobody knew what actually was going to happen. So everything happened by a surprise. Next day, when I went into my backyard, then my neighbors, they were screaming, and the last thing I know, my, fa my family, my home was attacked. Was the, this during the day? It was evening? during the day. It day. was during the day, mm -hmm. around 1 p.m. I will never forget. Um, I was sitting in my backyard and just wanting to be alone. And that's when everything happened. I didn't get a chance to go back in home in my house because my house already was attacked. Oh my so gosh. I took off. I decided either I run away. I decided to say, no, if I run away, my other neighbors that are screaming, I don't know what happened. So. I decided to hide in my, we had bushes in our backyard, it was big tall flowers, so I hid there. But before that, I witnessed my neighbor dying. As I climbed the wall, the fence between us, that's when I saw that she was running towards where I was. Oh my God. And I saw a guy with a machete. And he screamed it out, your house is next. And I knew he saw me. Wow. That's why they, when they came in my home, they looked for me. They couldn't find me. That's why they burned the house. Oh my gosh. So I took off running. I went later on. I took off running. I went to my neighbors. The, he grabbed me by the neck. He said, we don't want any cockroaches, tootsies here. So I took off running, but he shot at me. Mm. I took off towards the jungle and for a hundred days, I was uh, naked, running, hungry, Alone? desperate. As a 14 year old kid, yes. 
you were just, you were not going to go down without a fight. So you're running for your life, obviously. There's death and destruction all around you. Yes. And you found a, a baby. Did you come upon a, a, a child, another yes. child? Yes. Actually, I don't know if it was a week or three weeks. You know, I couldn't count. I didn't know what, where I was. Um, so I remember I was hiding and I heard, I keep hearing this small something crying. I thought it was a cat. Okay. Actually, it was a little baby, like four or five months old, laying there crying, and the parents and siblings they were killed. Oh my gosh. So were they, I. Were they with their bodies around? Yes, the baby? they were around. And that little baby, I mean, I watched her very closely, uh, and I just went and snatched her and went back. And I remember the time she saw me, she smiled at me. Oh my gosh. And it's like, I kind of feel like that beautiful little girl saved my life and she motivated me to even work harder to stay alive. How were you surviving? Because you were in hiding, obviously. What were you eating? What were you, what were you drinking? Okay, I used to hide during the day and I would get out during the night. Okay. But I wasn't as lucky as you guys think because I got caught a few times and the first time I remember the first time I was hiding, I remember a guy who just lost his wife. I will never forget his name. His name was Fider. He came running and he was breathing everywhere. He just lost his family. He was like to escape. He told me something nobody ever told me before. You are very smart, you can survive. Don't make it easy for them to catch you. Oh. If you run, remember most of them, they don't have guns. They will probably run after you. When they get tired, they will just back off. Right. This man saved my life with his devices. He motivated me to even try even harder to do my best to, oh my to stay gosh. alive. I, I know several people have asked you, you know, how did you outlast that? Um, because the baby was killed. Everybody around you is dying, and that's the way you described it, is that you outlasted it because you were determined to outlast it you in know, the grace of God. Is that a story behind it? Growing up, my father used to tell me that I was worthless and oh. I was good for nothing. So I kind of wanted to show them how actually wrong he was. That's right. My message, every time, I tell people how I feel. I tell them, remember, if somebody tell you that you're worthless or you're nothing, you're not doing a good job, it's because they have issues. That's it's right. not, issue is not you. That's issue right. is them. Amen. So sometimes people try to tell you you're nothing or they try to, to destroy you in a way. Don't believe them. Actually, believe in yourself and prove them wrong. Absolutely. That's what I did. Yeah. Oh. So I proved my father wrong, that actually I was smart, yes. and I'm so grateful today. Get us to the day where you ran no more, you were helped, what, what, tell us about okay, that. Okay, so um, I remember the march just on a bridge, the Hutus now, they were losing power. So they didn't know how to, what to do with all of us. Okay. So what they did is, they marched us on a bridge, they decided to kill all of us. And it was kind of tough to watch a big line of people on a bridge and they would just oh. kill them and push them off. Mm. So I remember looking in front of me, oh my God, I'm standing in blood. I said, I'm not gonna die today. I looked at that little baby, I said, I'm so sorry, I couldn't protect you and save you. She smiled and touched my face. I panicked, I took off running, I pushed people behind me. Oh my God. The guy shot me in the leg and he dragged me back on the bridge and he snatched the baby off my hand and threw the baby off, but the baby didn't die. What happened is I remember the first swing, the second swing, I rose, it was kind of like brink. So I thought I was dead. I don't know how wrong I was in dead bodies. Yeah. People digged me out and saved my life. They took me in a safe place. 
Yeah. You don't know how long they thought you were, you were with they the dead bodies. Dead. I yeah. don't know how long I was there really there. Or? I don't know because when they found me, um, my feet, they were swearing and my, I couldn't see in one of my eyes because oh my the God. skin of my face was covering yeah. me up. Um, I was in very bad shape and they took us in a hospital where it was no doctors, it was no electricity, they just dumped us there. It was kind of piling up with, you know, injured people slash dead people and oh my God. so I thought I was going to die. So you're in the hospital. When you got better to leave the hospital, did a family take you in? Where, where did you go then? Actually, my grandma, my mother's side in Europe, she's the one who transferred me to Europe because if I was in Africa and get treated there, they were exposing to input to my both legs because oh. of the, all the injuries I had. So when I was transferred in Europe, first of all, I was in Nairobi for like a year and a half, then I went back to France. Uh, that's where, um, you know, I got the best doctors and the best treatments. And I wow. did some therapy and... Uh, so you're a, a world away from that, from, from where you were as a child. Any thoughts of going back? Have you been back? Yes, I did go back a few times, but the first, 10 years, it was tough because the memories, everything was still the same. Um, but now it's easier because they changed everything. They, they built the country, it's beautiful, and all the bad memories that are gone, it's easier for me to go back. But every time I go back, it's like all my friends are gone. Mm. You know, it's kind of like hurt me in a way that everybody I knew that gone. Do you have family left? I don't have anybody left right now, but all the children I have adopted and my friends, they're my family. Yes. Yeah. Such a story of overcoming and we, you, you must get this book. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. The dark side of human nature, obviously your, your whole story and, and there's so much more to know and to learn. How do people get a, a hold of this book? Everywhere on Google. Okay. okay. You know, also you can find me on triumphoverdarkness.com. Okay. It and is, it all is. information will come up. Wow. Yes. A story that we can all learn from. You just never, ever give up. Mm -mm. Never give up. Thank you so much. Thank it you so much for having pleasure. me. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll be right back. Coming up on The Spiel. What was, the, what was the other ones? I can't even think Boxers of Boxers and Briefs. Well, I'm not going to do that one. That's when there's a girl host. <laughs> we consider ourselves farm and table, like you said. We try to grow um, everything that we can on, um, on site, actually. So anything from you know, lettuce in our salads to garnishes wow. to herbs um, to any of the flowers all come from on site. I would encourage all of you to pay it forward and let that random act of kindness define us as a nation. You'll know you're in Shawnee forest country when the hills rise up to meet you. When the fruit of the land seems to be waiting for you to pick it where at the end of every path, you'll find another reason to raise a toast. The Shawnee National Forest is home to miles of unbelievable natural wonders, adventure, wineries, <laughs> and unique places to stay. That's how you'll know you're in Shawnee Forest Country. Plan your getaway at southernmostillinois.com. Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Josh from Firefly Grill. And you're watching us on The Spiel. We price online. Most dealers won't do that. I won't be beat. They get a hold of us, want to look at a camper, we give them a video, we give them a write-up. They don't have to be in our showroom to do their homework. But we are 100% a full service deal. Parts, we've got a service van from the customer service department. People are buying these, they're happy. They're going somewhere with the kids, with their grandparents, with their parents. Get a hold of us, tell us what you want to look at, and see what you get from us. It will surprise you. Try State RV. We supply the how, you supply the happy. I just love getting to meet new people and getting to influence them about how great of a college 
three years. I'm wanting to be a nurse and they have a very good nursing school. So you get leadership skills. They really teach you how to succeed. I want to become a leader and ultimately I want to be just the best nurse I can be. You can do it and we can help. Three Rivers College. Success starts here. You're watching The Spiel. I'm Jason Pinkston, and this is your Backstage Pass. Today on Backstage Pass, we hang out at the Exit Inn in Nashville for the Kendall Marvel Honky Tonk Experience and to pick the brain of the multifaceted producer of Kendall's upcoming album, Keith Gaddis. Singer, songwriter, band leader, producer. How do we introduce you, Keith? Uh, I don't know. Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Master of none? That might be more the case there. No, I don't think so. I think you're the master of all of them. How do you identify yourself? I just usually just tell people I play, play music. Yeah. You know, and I do a little bit of everything. And You're an artist, right? I just make music. The job changes from day to day, but it's good. I know? first became familiar with you, I don't know the year now, but I heard a song, and it was Charlie Robinson. It was El Cerrito Place. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I remember when I heard that, I thought there's nothing else out there that sounds anything like this right now. Kind of had that Southwest, Southern mm -hmm. California type of vibe. Is there a story behind that song? I had left Nashville, moved to Hollywood. Me and a buddy of mine that I went out there with, we ended up deciding that we that rent was so expensive out there that we needed to maybe partner up and be roommates in a place. And so it just so happened that it, we found this place on a, a Two block street called El Cerrito Place. I mean, there's a lot of backstory in there, you know, if you hear the song, but all the, everything pretty much in that whole story is true, and all the, the setting and the scenery that you see when you hear that song is that's where I lived. When Kenny Chesney recorded it, was it a different, was it received differently? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, that's just more mainstream and yeah you know what it just opened it up to a bigger audience and mm -hmm. did you record it before charlie robinson uh -huh. i did it first on a big uh on a record i made out in california called big city blues i guess somehow charlie got a copy of that record and i was supposed to go tour on that record and i got the job with dwight and so i kind of postponed my my own personal career for a minute to go play with him because he's one of my heroes and sure. you know at the time we before I even started playing with him, we became really good friends, so it was a lot of fun. So I decided to go do that, and I was actually out playing with Dwight when Charlie called me and said, hey man, you mind if I cut this song? And it was great, it was the best thing that ever happened to that song. So let's jump to that, being on the road with Dwight Yoakam. He started coming out and seeing me play, or just kind of hanging out in the scene that I was playing in out in Hollywood and surrounding areas of uh, Los Angeles. It was a cool kind of country rock scene happening whenever I moved out there. It was about 2001, two, and uh, kind of became friends. And um, he ended up having a couple of gigs that he wanted to do just acoustic and wanted somebody to back him up. And called me and asked me if I'd do it, and I said, "Of course, love to." He was sitting in with our band and coming to a bunch of our shows, and we just kind of, I don't know, started making music together. You know, a little bit, just more. Um, organically and naturally than, you know, anything forced or, hey, I need to hire you. Or, or, you know, so it was more like that. And then he had a lot of fun doing the few shows that we did where it was just he and I on acoustic. And so we did a, we did a tour called Almost Alone, and it was just he and I. And then he decided to put a new band together and asked me if I'd help him with it. And so I had a I just I told him I'd love to, but I need a couple of weeks to think about it, you know, because I still had my record I was working on. I was doing some other producing, and then it just kind of just came down for me is like you know if Dwight Yoakam asks you to go put a band together <laughs> and go on the road, you go. What are you gonna say? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that for too many people, but for you know, for him, yeah, Bob Dylan probably. Probably. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most interesting things to know about Keith Gaddis' career of singing, songwriting, and producing music is that he never set out to do most of it. I moved here to Nashville in 92, and I kind of came just as a musician, and I kind of came as a utility guy, or thinking I was going to be a utility guy, because I played a little bit of a lot of different instruments, and 
talk about jack of all trades and master of none, that really was me back then. I really didn't play any of them well, and I figured out once I moved here I needed to get really good at one thing. So I kind of set all my other instruments aside and, and started focusing on just probably what I was best at, which was singing, performing, and playing electric guitar. I had a few gigs on the road, but my first real, really cool gig I think I was 23, I played with Johnny Paycheck. Wow! Toured with him, yeah. And about, about the time that was done, I got a record deal with RCA here in Nashville and started making my own record. So I did that for a while, pretty much right up until the time I moved to L.A. So, so how did you get into producing then? Because uh, you, you produced Kendall's new album. Uh-huh. You know, I just started doing it. Um, when I moved to L.A., it just kind of started happening. I produced that Big City Blues record of mine. And then um, I met this guy, Waylon Payne, who's actually singing tonight. He was living out there, and uh, we started playing around together a little bit in different bars and different situations in, in, in Hollywood. And um, I just thought he knew, somebody needed to make a record on him, and so I uh, made a record on him. He got a record deal immediately with it. And so I just kind of started doing it a little bit at a time, just as, out of more than anything. It's like I'd, I just needed to, you know, because it's like I, there were whether it was my stuff or other people that, you know, ha weren't able to figure it out for themselves. Ne I felt like they needed to make a record, so if I didn't do it, nobody else would. Right. Kind of thing, and kind of more just for the love of music and just the the acknowledgement of, you know, some artists that I really thought were great that needed to be heard. So that's really how I started doing it. For whatever reason, it's just more about instinct, and um, and if it really feels right, and it feels like it's something I can help with. So if I can't help somebody, you know, end up being better than they even thought they could be on tape, then I don't need to take their money. You know, <laughs> you're wasting both of your time. And yeah, and wasting time, sure. Do you want to give your studio a plug? Is it Pioneer Town? Is that what it's Pioneer called? Pioneer Town. Yeah. Where is that located? It's just outside of Nashville. In doing your introduction, I left out one other thing. You're also a Texan, right? Yes, absolutely. You're, so I, I know that that plays a big role in your style of music. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, in Texas, especially when I grew up, there's a there was quite a wide range of musical styles and a lot of influences for me to um, pull from. Um, you know, when living in Texas, you had everybody from George Strait to ZZ Top and you know all the old, old older uh, swing, western swing guys and the Bob Wills guys and those that crew and then you know the shuffle kings oh, like yeah. Johnny Bush and Ray Price everybody was still playing down there and that was a big still big part of the whole scene and really before the I, well, I kind of grew up down there before the new Texas country thing mm -hmm. blew up and happened and back then it was uh, down there it was there's a lot of different styles of music you know and it all made sense to me <laughs> speaking of texas and george Strait, i mean mm -hmm. we can't have this interview without talking about the fact that you got a couple of george Strait cuts i mean that's mm -hmm. yeah. that's again that's the top of the heap yeah i think he cut on the last two records i think he's cut a total of seven of my songs on wow. the last two records <laughs> i got a car is a really good song and I oh just thanks kinda uses the the vehicle is like a metaphor for love or something. Is sure, that, is that yeah, yeah, thanks, man. I, did you yeah. write that? Did you just write that or did you have any experience in that or just kind of no, uh, pulling from a... Well, I don't know. You know, a lot of those kind of songs you still pull from right. all sorts of your own experiences. Sure. And I had a co-writer on that, Tom Douglas, so, you know, he's got his own experiences too. Sure. So yeah. Even if you're making up a story, it's seldom completely just made up. You're drawing from something. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, we couldn't be here tonight, I guess, and not talk about uh, the Honky Tonk experience. So, here we are again. Yeah. What is this, number four or five? And That's right. Getting bigger and better every time. I, this was the first time when I came here, it was the first time I saw you perform. But then since then, I've seen you perform a few other times. And you, you're the consummate performer. You're so interesting to watch when you're playing. Uh, I mean, you're, you're like a you're I on have show. have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good, though, because I think it must be that you're feeling the music. <clears throat> it's definitely not a show or an act. I just kind of get into the music usually if if I'm into it I get into it sure you know what's next or do you not know or are you just going where the wind takes you yeah, well um, 
always. Sure. <laughs> What's next is I'm about to play with Ken Kendall <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> up here and doing a bunch of honky tonk songs really loud in a rock bar. Uh, Willie or Waylon? Sure. That's the hardest one. <laughs> I mean, for me, Willie. Yeah, I'm a Willie fan too. I, I mean, through and through. I yeah. love Waylon too. I just I, yeah, I'm it's almost sort of like being... it's not fair. <laughs> it is not. It's an unfair question. Mexican or Italian? Oh, Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> what was the what was the other ones? I can't even think. Of. Boxers or briefs? Well, I'm not gonna do that one. That's when there's a girl host. <laughs> I'm Jason Pinkston, and this has been your backstage pass. Coming up on the spiel. With all the new stuff we're rolling out, we definitely want it to be a happening. You know, we want we want you to have come and have an experience, and not just grab a bite to eat, get full, and take off. I plan on becoming a teacher and traveling to a different country to teach overseas. You can do a cartwheel. <laughs> that's, that's the end of my talent. <laughs> I was in the A-plus program, so I had an A-plus scholarship. I still get to live at home. I don't pay very many bills. It was affordable. Dream big and stay determined. You can do it and we can help. Three Rivers College, success starts here. Maintaining your family wealth and preserving your assets can be one of the most rewarding benefits of your lifetime. The Bank of Heron has the experience and position to help you with estate planning or establishing a trust. The Bank of Heron can even act as an unbiased trustee of your estate. We offer guardianships. We will serve as the executor of your estate. And it can give you the peace of mind that your loved ones will be taken care of the way you see fit. The Bank of Heron. It's not just a trust. It's a relationship. You're watching The Spiel. And we are spieling it in our Southside Lumber Kitchen, brought to you by Prairie Farms, and I am super excited about today's guest. I am too. Katie and Josh from Firefly Grill from Effingham. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you for having Something us. Something yeah. smelling good. Yes. What's happening? Wonderful stuff. Uh, right here we got one of our new brunch uh, specials that we're running every Sunday right now. This is our breakfast hash. Um, and this has got roasted sweet potatoes, roasted purple potatoes, uh, some house-made smoked pork belly. Uh, caramelized so onions. You. Oh, this oh, is a healthy dish. How do you house make a smart belly? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> a pork smelly. Smart smelly. Pork yes. smelly smelly Blah. pork. The pork, pork belly is, uh, is delicious. Oh <laughs> uh, no, we we marinate it in, a, in an El Pastor thing, which is very like South American. So it's got a lot of yes. spices, a lot of uh, pineapple juice and pineapple. Yes. Yes. Then we smoke it um, and then braise it down. So it's it's like a six or seven hour per cooking process. Wow. Uh, cool it, dice it, and then it goes into this uh, just for this hash. You know, if you've seen the signs and, and you've stopped in and you've experienced, it's very much a farm to fork or farm to table concept. Yep. I mean, everything's fresh. You guys are growing herbs there, and 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 I think you're really concerned with quality, aren't you? We are. Um, that is a huge, huge thing for us. So we, we consider ourselves farm and table, like you said. We try to grow um, everything that we can on, um, on site, actually. So anything from, you know, lettuce in our salads to garnishes wow. to herbs um, to any of the flowers we, you know, um, dress the plates with all come from on site. Nice. I've got to know what you just squirted there. Uh, that was, <laughs> what that was is, is what we call a demi gloss. So that's, uh, that's beef stock that's been cooked down and cooked down and cooked down until it's super thick. And then we add it to some of the braising liquid from the pork to give us some, bring that flavor all together with the oh. pork. And eggs on top, now that's just the thing to do, you know? Yeah, you gotta just, get that yolk in there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So good, mm -hmm. so good. You, you've talked about, um, Chef, doing an externship uh, overseas and such. Talk sure. a little bit about your culinary background. Uh, well, Katie actually is my sister. Right. We grew up uh, with, our family owned a truck stop in Effingham actually. So awesome. I kind of grew up kicking around in that truck stop. Did you make any kitchen. bologna sandwiches in that truck stop for people? There may have been okay. allegedly. Okay. allegedly yeah. Two or three, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some fried bologna uh, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there I, I kind of worked for my family for years and years selling to my trucks and also working a kitchen job and finally said, you know, that's really what I need to be doing. So about seven or eight years ago I went to school and um, worked around the St. Louis area for quite a while. I worked in Italy for a while, did an externship there. And nice. Yeah, did and just... Did Katie get to go to Italy? She did not. I didn't, oh. I didn't get the invite. She was off doing her own thing. Yeah, I was, I actually, born and raised in Effingham, and I worked um, in Kentucky for a while, so I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, worked for um, a 
um, casino there. I always wanted to be a wedding planner. So when I was younger, I wanted to be Frank from yes, um, Father yes, of the Bride. Yes. That was like my thing. <laughs> um, so when I moved back to Effingham, I worked for a convention center for a while, but then came over to the Firefly because we are expanding how many events we are doing there. Okay, so nice. weddings, retirements, nice. yeah birthday parties, anniversaries, all kinds of things. Nice. So. We talked about how food is just such a centerpiece of entertainment now. You know, people, you, you want to plan things around this. Are you seeing more and more that that's how people are approaching what it is that you offer? Oh yeah, I think in general, people are treating food more as an event than just, uh, you know, a meal. Right. And uh, we definitely embrace that. And, and especially, you know, with, with all the new stuff we're rolling out, we definitely want it to be a happening. You know, we want, we want you to have, come and have an experience and not just grab a bite to eat, get full and take off. You know, you know what, when you come to the Firefly, what, how, what would you call this if you wanted to order that? What is that called? This is just our sweet potato, our brunch hash, our sweet potato hash. Yes, so this, this it is needs our, a cooler name though. Sweet potato right? hash, yeah, it doesn't do it justice, no. does it? With like, all the extra cool things This in fancy there. thing and then the chef squirted something, you yeah. know, the, the, the demi-gloss. <laughs> what and did we do? Demi-gloss. Demi, demi-gloss, is that, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you got it. How about that? Yeah. Demi-gloss surprise. <laughs> we're we're, we're you open to ideas. Yeah, I was going to say, if you want to submit your ideas over to us. You know, the other thing, so we, we get to sample this, I hope. So Absolutely. Let's, let's move this yeah. over um, so we can try that. Right and I see a, a big thing now is, what is it, a dessert in a, in a cup, a, a little taste? What is it that uh -huh. you're offering Yeah, so folks? we call those our dessert shooters. Um, so our uh, pastry chef, Michael Conti, um, is actually from the Colorado area and came to Firefly at the end of last year and, and kind of redid all of our desserts. So I will have Josh explain to you what each of them are, but they're a nice little bite at the end of the meal because it's not too heavy and it's just something And most end of the time it. you can't decide what you want, so this sure. gives you a Absolutely. And these can be, Absolutely. you can get these That's as just sauce. one shooter, you can get these as a whole flight of shooters like you can see here, and they're all very different. This one is a no-bake cheesecake uh, with a strawberry preserves and a salt and pepper almond streusel oh. on the top. Uh, this has got a uh, mango mousse with a raspberry gelee. Uh, fresh blackberry and then a raspberry fun dip, which is kind of like the candy fun dip, a but we fun make dip. it in uh -huh. the house with yes. dehydrated raspberries and mm -hmm. whatnot. I can't well, stop eating this. I was going to say, what do we think of the hash? This is amazing. Good. I Thank cannot you very much. stop eating this. Um, you guys offer such a wide variety. Talk about some of the other things that are popular and that you're preparing now because you are taking some risk. You're doing some things that are uncommon. Sure. Um, some of the things we're doing right now, uh, one of our big sellers is a uh, pork shank dish, but it's actually turned on its head and turned into almost like an Indian. It's got a curried lentils, mm. Um, mm. A, a turmeric curry sauce, a lot of different What's fresh name? herbs. Uh, it is called the... The pork shank. Pork yeah. shank. Pork shank <laughs> curry. Yeah. yeah. I would say we're probably most no well known for our steaks and our seafood. We have mm -hmm. a great swordfish piccata dish on, our scallops. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about those earlier. Um, and then people love our burgers too. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah. On the burgers? Uh, not right now, but okay. you never know. We can put, I mean, you can, we can add it to want. anything we'll you anything. want. Absolutely. We can put it on the dessert shooters if you're hungry for it. We'll yeah. do whatever you want. <laughs> mm. Bottom line, you aren't sparing any expense. I mean, you're buying the best ingredients and you're creating these dishes, correct? Yeah, everything that we don't grow on site, we either deal with local farmers. Those eggs are from uh, Short Legs and Eggs, a, little, a tiny little uh, place in Altamont, Illinois, oh, that does all cool. of our eggs for us. Um, yeah, we try to do as many local growers as possible. And we try to source so much stuff from our own gardens. And this year, I mean, we have everything from tomatoes and peppers to all of oh. our greens for our salads, mm -hmm. um, all of our herbs. We talked um, about lavender too. Yes, absolutely. Yes. We use uh -huh. a lavender yeah. simple syrup at the bar. So we grow our own lavender in house. And it also just makes the nice the front of the building look nice. Mm. You have that is so lavender. exciting. Yeah. 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 We use it to decorate our tables, things mm -hmm. like that. I really want to move in out there. I mean, it, it, when you walk in, uh -huh. just the experience and you feel like you're on a country porch and you know, it's the rustic barn wood and Girl. Is there one dish that you think that people come to you for? Oh, we got to go with the Firefly for. Gosh, oh, that's gosh. a good question. It's really I mean, hard to say that's that good. You know why? Because so everything is good. Also. Yeah, we change our menu frequently, especially with the seasons and with the farm being so big. You know, right now it, it, we were doing lots of salads and things like that, soups, just to really use what we can grow. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's really hard to say that's yeah. like our one dish. Right. So. Okay. That's yeah. a good problem. You it's a what? great that's problem good. to have. Yeah. You both are obviously doing what you love, and um, if, if there is a way to invite our viewers out to come experience what you do, 
what would you say to a potential guest, a potential diner um, to come and see you to visit? Sure. So, um, I, you know, I would definitely, we always push our farm and table. We want to nourish everybody that comes through the door. Um, so we, we really want people to feel like they're family mm -hmm. when they come in. Um, so we invite them definitely to come. Our Facebook page is huge. So yes. if people want to check that out, we post different dishes. Um, we're even starting to do kind of cookbook um, entrees so people can kind of um, see how things are prepared, nice. what's in things. That's neat. Yeah, so I mean, we definitely want to push people to definitely research us before they come, but definitely to stop. Yeah. Um, we get tons of travelers that come through. So That's a great location. It's a great location, yeah, right where the interstates connect, 57 and 70. So, you know, we, we love people to come out. Congrats on leaving the truck stop. I think, oh. you, <laughs> right. I think you. you made the right choice. Excellent, good. That you glad. feel good about what you're doing. I'm, pr I'm pretty confident what we're doing, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, thanks so great. much again. Thank for coming. you for having us. It. Yes. And we'll be right back. Coming up on the spiel. What yeah. do you brand your kind of music as? Um, Probably the heavier alternative rock. Yeah. Heavy alternative, alternative rock. Say, that might be a first for the spiel. Yeah. It's never too early or too late to start considering your future or your spouse or your children or your grandchildren. The Bank of Heron has the experience and position to help you with estate planning or establishing a trust. Preserving your assets can be one of the most rewarding benefits of your lifetime. The Bank of Heron can even act as an unbiased trustee of your estate, giving you the peace of mind that your loved ones will be taken care of the way you see fit. The Bank of Heron. It's not just a trust. It's a relationship. Education is important. Three Rivers makes it easy to get one. With locations in Dexter, Kennett, Malden, Piedmont, Sykeston, Cape, and Poplar Bluff. With over 100 programs of study in high demand areas like criminal justice, diesel mechanics, nursing, business, teacher education, even ag technology. Three Rivers College has a degree for you and a convenient location where you can get it. So what are you waiting for? The time to enroll is right now. Don't miss your mark. Success starts here. Three Rivers College. These days, video is everywhere. TVs, computers, even your phone. With so many ways to use video to reach your potential audience, it's become an important part of doing business. If you like the commercials you've seen during the spiel, and if your business could benefit from a creative approach to telling your story, with attention-grabbing visuals and thoughtfully executed scripts, perhaps it's time you give Growing Media a call. We'd love to hear from you. The Spiel presents You're On, 100% original new music. Hello, we are Sky Dweller from right here in Southern Illinois. And the song's called Bloodlines. <laughs> Time will tell 
sinking to the core. And time will tell. And I know this feeling up to hell. Let it flow. Some things you can't tell. I have had trouble all my life with anxiety and depression. There are so many other people out there like me who deal with this every single day. My main goal is to get the mental health degree and start my own practice. I want to go out there and help them. Three Rivers College, success starts here. I need to find a doctor fast. Why don't you go to Christopher Rural Health? They have 11 clinics. What do they do? They took my state insurance and I wasn't put on a long waiting list. We didn't have insurance and they saw my kids and me. Now we're all covered. They hooked me up close to home and got me a ride too. Even if you can't pay, they don't turn you away. Do you have their number? Sure. 1-800-408-7351. Visit us at crhpc.org. You're watching The Spiel. So the you're on segment today, we have Sky Dweller. Yep. What 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 exactly is that a watch? That's a like a fancy watch. It is, and I didn't know that until. Is it? It is. Sky Dweller is a we're watch. We're waiting for the cease and desist order to come in. <laughs> yeah. Until then. I think it's a it's a type of Rolex, and after we name the band and we only, try to look our stuff up on YouTube, you right. get a bunch of watches. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So only That's the fancy. finest for us. That's not fancy. What we, That's not what we wanted. How how did you come up with it? If you didn't know it was it a was watch? actually uh, it was actually his idea. I, I think it was something that had been. Our last band, the name was Anodyne Sky, okay. and a so lot of, it, it was kind of our baby, you know, so we wanted to keep some essence of that. Got it. Um, and we both were both really into, uh, you know, space and getting into that type of stuff. Dwelling. So. Dwelling. Okay. Dwelling. Well, yeah, chicks dwelling are, chicks are going to want to find you, so your, your names are, uh, so they don't have to look for Sky Dweller. They can look for? Uh, my name is Seeger. Drew. Okay. Jeremy Myers. Yep. There it is, right there. And then our, our bassist, which is not here, is uh, Caleb Snyder, and then our drummer is Brandon Everard. Very All nice. Right. So yeah. you play locally uh, here in Southern Illinois? Yeah, we play locally. Uh, we also play in other places like Clarksville and St. Louis. And we what, try to branch out. What yeah. do you brand your kind of music as? Um, Probably the heavier alternative rock. Yeah. Heavy alternative, alternative rock. Say, yeah. That might be a first for the spiel. Yeah. Alternative Country. metal, hard rock, yeah. Okay. Some, some so this is very dialed back for us. Good. What we, what you we normally just throw down like... Normally it's a little... Yes. Okay. So you don't sit on stools, you kind of bang your head and... Yeah, there's there's some movement, definitely. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, what do you want people to experience when they come out to one of your shows? What do you want them to take away from it? Uh, a, a, just a good, intense rock show, you know. Um, we all we all really value not only good musicianship and making sure that the music is there and the artistic side is there, but actually putting on a show, because there's, there's too many rock bands that just kind of stand there and we don't, we don't like that. Yeah, no We kidding. call our bassist the gorilla, because he's, he's constantly just... Jumping and it. all around. And he's going to laugh as just, soon as he hears Just it. come out and have a good time. That's really, nice. Yeah, that's nice. really what we're about. Have you guys had a, a really cool experience um, where perhaps, you know, somebody was in the audience or you've had an opportunity to do something? You know, being on the spiel is a huge deal. It is a big deal. Uh, it's but, awesome. You know, yeah. yeah. But uh, other than our... that, um, have there been any other really cool moments you want to share outside of just taking the stage? Uh, with Skydweller, um, we've done some other stuff in the past. Um, I think our biggest thing right now is we're getting ready for Moonstock in August. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're playing on the same day as uh, All That Remains and Five Finger Death yeah. Punch, and um, it, it ought to be a good Did a you good say five, five Finger, finger death, death Punch? punch. Yes. Yeah. Death or duck? Death. Oh. It's a Five yeah. Finger Death Punch. I like punch. how you guys synchronize when you said that. Wow. You can tell you're on I, <laughs> That's a lot. Let's get them. Let's make sure we book the five, five finger, finger duck, duck punch. punch. Duck it's, punch. I would rather that be five finger duck punch. Person. Wouldn't that yeah. be duck punch? That would be the yeah. best. They'd have it's, the coolest it's got logo. a better. It's got more to it. Awesome. Yeah. Five finger duck punch. Well, they can find you guys uh, online, social media, all that good stuff. Yep. So we're, we're on Instagram. We are on um, 
Facebook, obviously, we're cool. on Apple Music. We're on a bunch of sound streaming sites, Amazon. Awesome. Um, and yeah. Keep up the good work yeah. and uh, Gorilla keep bouncing around and doing yeah. what all you're doing, <laughs> all right? And we'll be right back. We love making new friends. Visit us online at facebook.com forward slash spiel on. It doesn't have to cost a thing to do a random act of kindness. These are for you, Mama. <laughs> so divided in this country right now, and it needs to stop. This eye for an eye leaves everyone blind. Love one another and let that define us as a nation. Farmer State Bank, no one serves you better. My dad came here in the early 50s and started. My name is John Smith. My brother Terry and I have Smith Dairy Farm. And we're producers of milk for Prairie Farms Dairy. And we're outside at 4.30 in the morning. Cows need fed 365 days a year and you learn the mannerisms of each animal. You learn who they are. Prairie Farms, they depend on us to be finished milking at a time when the truck's going to come to get the milk. We're all one big team. Proudly farmer owned. It's part of what we've been raised to do. Prairie Farms. You're watching The Spiel. Well, what would you think of the show today? Were you inspired? You know, we usually kind of end the show with being goofy and silly, but right. we're still back on the book. Yeah. And still back on Marie Kristen Williams. Yeah, Christine it's just, Williams it's just a name that you need to remember. And you need to reach out because she wants to share her story. Yes, if you're a school, if, you know, when I think about her going to schools, and she told me off air too that, um, she goes to where there's a lot of bullying and right. suicides right. and she wants to be that inspiration. Right. And because she said, you know, there were so many people in her life. She she did not have a very good childhood. You know, we didn't really get into that in the interview. But apparently the home life was not very good. Well, um, she kind of briefed on it where she said her dad, right. you know, was just told belittled her, you'll her. never amount to nothing sure. and belittled her. You know, and, the, the first chapter, listen to this, it shouldn't hurt to be a child. Wow. And you know what? If you're if you're watching and you happen to be one of those that are bullied or you feel hopeless, there's a bigger don't, purpose for don't you. Don't stop. No. You know? Don't no. let anyone get you down. Like she said, no. that made her matter. Yeah. And she also said that um, the person saying that to you is the one with the problem. Yeah. It's not you. She's such an inspiration, though. You know, she talks about a childhood without love, the sadness and anger of an abused child. So obviously, you know, again, uh, and then she talks about the massacre, the neighbors, my enemy, my killers, the hate of the people during the Civil War as the world stood by and watched, and no one wanted to get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, she talks about the killers because she had several encounters with them, you know, and she talks about how she escaped death. She just wasn't going to die. She, she wasn't said, I'm going not going to lay down and die. And I don't know how many surgeries she had to have, but yeah. seriously, I've never seen prettier legs now in my life. Well, you know, but she kept, she said, feel this, yeah, and it was on her was head, scars, and there was a big. scar, and here, and here, and there. she she couldn't remember the number of times that she had been hit by a machete. And how about the scars that will always live here? Oh, yeah. Wow. But what she's doing and, and turning that around, you know, she talks about her life and the nightmare, but then, you know, the justice and, and meeting people. And then you have to also grieve the loss, but know that you have to move on. Right. And my goodness, just the strength and the courage that she's found. And she talks about doing good and helping others are the keys to happiness. A reiteration of what exactly. you just said. Exactly. And I don't know how many times she mentioned God. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he had hand plucked her out of that situation because he did? you don't get through that. that no, kind of... and you know what he says? I've got great things for you in the future, my child. You'll That's go right. on and spread That's great right. words. And she's doing it. Yes. You know, because too many times people might go through something like this, and like she said, it would be very easy to sit inside and and go inward. But she's decided to to come out, and she again, she does want her story heard because she feels like it could help somebody else. So yeah, what a what a great 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 book. I can't wait to jump into it yeah all right I don't really know how to pronounce our word today so it's gonna be difficult who's um, gonna remember it concatenate can 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 cat can can concatenate concatenate I am mate or nate concatenate all right listen here we go concatenate 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 I mean that's it here's what it is to link together in a series or a chain I mean together we're, we're more powerful Bigger numbers we're stronger absolutely. yeah 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 while the stories are separate, they're concatenated in that character uh, recurrence. So, Guess what, too? Go. What? 
you and I concatenated several years well, ago. We've concatenated many, many times. You and I concatenate together. Yes, concatenate. If I had to concatenate with anyone, it would I be would you. I would concatenate with you. Thanks for the concatenation. Okay, ready? Concatenate. Four. Is four it? Syllables. Is it four? Don't take two or three, Angie Wyatt. Concatenate. You're right. Thank you. You go first. I went to the Royal the verb. You did. Ready? Go ZR. Concatenate. Good job. Did I do it? You did. <gasps> So we want you to go out today and you concatenate, and concatenate, and hook formalinks. with somebody. Yeah, there you hook. go. Hook up. Hook up. All right. <laughs> this was supposed to be serious. It was. We'll see you next week. Assurance I have, so standing in the aftermath, is it me? 